Our next question, we're talking 2023 once again, and will you be raising your rates for next year? And if you are, how do you go about raising your rates when it comes to that time of the year to raise your rates for the next year? So I think then we're back to, is it Cubby this time? We're back, Cubby. Yeah, I uh, I do intend to raise my rates for next year. We've slowly, uh, we've gradually raised them this year due to the rising cost of inflation and gas and things of nature. So it was kind of a trending thing already. Um, starting back in July when some of, the, some of the gas rates were starting to go up, we said, okay, let's add another hundred dollars, add another hundred dollars. Um, we will be at first of January raising our rates again. Um, and we just, just do it. I mean, you know, it's, we don't do it like it's more incrementally. It's not like boom, $500, you know, um, but we, we know where we want to be and we'll start off the first of the year. Um, and then, then again, do another raise, uh, probably depending on the, what the economy is going to do, maybe the next you know, three, four months, raise it again and revisit it. Uh, right. but we had to do it a couple of times already this last fall and it, and it was well received. I mean, we never had anybody buck. And that's another thing when you, and, and I know a lot of people's business theory is when you get booked out a lot, you know, you need to raise your rates, right? Mm-hmm. So dates are filling and it's too easy. It's, it's an easy for the decision for them to go with you. It, you should raise your rates. And um, so we were doing that. And and, uh, and like I said, this fall is it's just they're, they're no bucks. I mean, nobody was, you know, um, was was saying anything bad about it. So sure. like I said, we just keep doing it. So when you're talking about raising, are you t- are you raising like, 50, you know, multiple times a year, you mentioned? Um, is it like a jumping a 50, a $100 thing? $100 each increment. Okay. Just to give you guys out there watching an idea of, of what... Uh, what kind of uh, thoughts Cubby has with that? So, Dan. Now, one thing that I always do is I always keep. Oh. So I'll raise my base, but keep my overtime really okay. So it's not nineteen seventy seven overtime rate, you know, but it's it's the same. I mean, it's you know, because I don't want to be like, oh, by the way, you know. Um, so I keep my overtime rate the the way that it That's is. Funny. But logical, very logical. And, you know, it's it's funny because I haven't changed my overtime rate in, in years, in years. And it's not because I'm worried about forgetting it. It's just one of those things where I've started to put more value on all the stuff that I do that leads into the event. And, and not to say the stuff that I do at the event isn't as important, but if I go an extra hour, like, yeah, that's worth some money. But, you know, the reason why you're paying so much up front for me is because of all the stuff that I'm doing that is before I ever good get thought. to your event. Very good thought. So, and, and I don't know if that there's any mentality, you know, I, I share what my overtime rate is with the, you know, with the couples, anytime you go over this certain, certain number and nobody's, I haven't really had anybody come back and say, well, why is your overtime rate? This, you know, is only this, but yet for five hours or four hours, whatever package you get, it's this. And it's, I haven't had anybody do that. So, but I, I think by having that, Overtime being much less than what the per hour would work out to for my big package, it gives a better impression that there's a lot more happening than you think. Um, at least that, that's what I'm hoping. I I will say I've already put a I've already put a raise in it next year in, in place. Um, however, I will say this, John. I'm hoping we still have the video up. Dave Turnier did a video a few years ago about raising rates and talking about the policy to do it, and and I and it was gold. It really was. And and his mentality is don't wait for January first. You know if you're going through the process, and he talked about you know when's a good time to up rates, and and kind of with what Kobe, Cubby was saying, you know some of it was like if you're not really getting pushed back, you know that's a signed up your uh, you know up your rates. And again, not like you jump from a thousand to two thousand, but you know there, there's some sort of increment and kind of seeing seeing that go, and 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 when's a good time to do it. And he said don't wait. Yeah, there's no, that, no, you know, if you're in, if you're in May and you're having all these signs that you can in, you increase your rates, you could have some fall dates at higher rates. Why wait until January 1st? There's, there's nothing magical about the calendar. Um, I, I will say that the one nice thing about maybe that calendar S type of thinking is, you know, for those of us that have that winter lull because of, of weather type of things going on, um, you kind of like, okay, new season, new rates. Like I kind of get that. Uh, but no, I went, I went to the new, I went to, I'm raising my rates for next year. I did just the flat $400 increase. And how I decided it was, I looked at what my smallest package was uh, of just doing the reception. And I, I was rarely getting that. I was really going out mainly for receptions and ceremonies. But every time I would get that reception only, I felt like I was taking a, a pay cut. Mm. So I'm like, you know what? I can bring this up to this price 
this can be my new bottom floor and this is where I'm at. I will say it's always scary when I do it. Every time I've done a pay increase, it's always felt nervous. This year felt a little bit more nervous because as I was talking earlier, how I'm not getting as many events or I wasn't getting as many events in advance. And so I started guessing myself, was it my prices? Mm, sure. Did I, did I price myself out? Did I do something like that? And no, it was just, it was the clientele was at least for my clientele. It was, it was their pushback. So I felt a little bit better now. My rates are there and, and I'm moving forward. I think everybody should. Now I will also say though, I've already deter predetermined because I'm starting to get calls for 2024. I'm, I'm going to stay at 2023 for, for two years. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of my thought. That's kind of where I, I, my gut is telling me. Um, I would also say anybody's thinking about pay raise, think about your next two or three years. Think about what you want to do because you can be like, oh, for 2023, I'm going to do this. And then you start getting 2024 and you're like, oh, well, I guess I'll just give you the same rates because I haven't thought about that yet. Start thinking now. If you're going to do it on that January 1st type of idea, start thinking now where you're going to go. My my version of, of the calendar when it comes to raising rates is generally the beginning of October. That uh, that October 1st, they'll change for the next year. And that's um, I, where I have done that. Um, this year, I think it was, uh, I think I jumped about $200 uh, per per show uh, on the different packages. Um, but I, one of the things is, um, as Michael's experience level has increased, now he is is getting closer price-wise to my show because we were charging two different rates because he just didn't have as much experience. Granted, he still doesn't have as much experience, but he's got a lot of good quality experience to bring him into a, uh, a better place when it comes to that. So that's kind of where I've used it in, is in October. And, I, and I've always kind of looked at it as, okay, in, in October, we can do that. We can quote some of the, quote the higher prices in October, November, December. And if we have to, and, and you, you know, we just, for some reason, it's not working, you know, you, we still have the January booking show where we can, you know, maybe change or at the end of the, the January timeframe, you know, which used to be the bridal show time in our neck of the woods. And we can always go back, you know, March and, and go back to the, prior year rates if we needed to. The irony is I've always had that as a, a an out clause and we've never used it. It's just once you start uh, confidently talking about what you can deliver for the rate you're going to charge, it usually, uh, the people who would have, who are going to buy are going to buy it at that rate. The people who would have never bought your first show because it was too expensive aren't going to buy it anyway. So you might as well uh, not, not uh, be, uh, you know, Letting, letting, leaving money on a table, or uh, going out and feeling like you're uh, undercutting yourself. Yeah, you know, John. Something else I think to that that really would also help is you know whether it's whether it's October first or September first. A lot of us we've seen kind of a trend over the years where summers used to be big for for people, and then now it seems at least where I'm at, fall is like huge. Like I, you know, I can be booked for fall and have holes in the middle of summer just because of the way it's gone lately. If you raise your rates kind of with that fall mentality, one, now you can kind of look at it as well. You know, if you decide to back off, you'll be like, well, I was charging a premium for a premium date. Like you can, you can, you can justify it that way if you did decide to. Sure. But by doing that increase for the fall and, and then because it's, they're probably going to book you, like you're going to get booked for those dates. It also gives you more confidence going into the next year that you're going to get those rates because you already have gotten those rates mm -hmm. because Again, it was a premium time, so people were more, yeah, it's a, it's a fall date. I need to get a DJ, and I want you, so yeah, I'm going to pay it. for sure. All right, let's jump to our next question. 